Good evening everyone and welcome to the Chrissy B Show. Now they're cute, they're cuddly and bring joy to our lives but if we're not ready for them or we have them for the wrong reasons life can get pretty tough. Yes on tonight's show we'll be talking all about children and some really bad bad reasons to have them and tonight I'm joined by Sharon Norton our child expert to give us her thoughts on tonight's topic and we've also got some lovely videos to share with you as well but first of all let's talk to the lovely Patricia. Hello. Hi, Chris. <laughs> you paying attention? Yes, <laughs> you, I am. Were you engrossed in your news just then? <laughs> yes. So you're a mum as well. We've sp spoken about you've got a daughter called Isabella. Yes. She's yes, seven, right? She's seven. Seven. She's seven okay. this week. So not easy being a mum, is it? It's better now. <laughs> I think it gets better as they grow older. Yeah. I think the hardest time is when they are little babies. They depend on you 100%, 24 hours a day. Yeah. And then you kind of have to give priority to them and you kind of come second place you don't get much sleep you don't get much time off time me time uh, but then after they grow older start walking start feeding by them feeding themselves yeah. and things start start to get easier and then you've got a little friend with you all yes, the time I do. haven't you i go shopping I've seen them with together her. so cute together you, go to shop. you know ha husbands men never have I'm not a shopping person, to be honest, but when I do go to a shopping mall, my husband doesn't have any patience to go around with me in the shops. Yeah. And if I have to buy something, normally I go to the mall if I need to buy something. And I cannot leave the place without, I, without before getting what I really want. Mm -hmm. So I go to one shop, I go to another, I go, I go inside all the shops until I find what I want. And he's not, okay, all right, I'm going to go to the movies or something and I'll meet you, meet you back later. Yeah. So Isabella comes with me oh, all the time. Oh, that's cute. We go for coffee shops together. Really? We oh, coffee. He's so sweet. <laughs> She's You're bringing her up to be now. a coffee, coffee person. <laughs> Even today she was telling me, she was telling me, mommy, you're my best friend. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> And she's that's got quite a few things. friends as well, so that's, that says a lot about you if she's that's calling you her best friend. one of the good friend. things of being your mom. Oh, that's lovely. All right, we're going to talk lots about it, because yeah. it's true, you do have to have kids for the right reason, because otherwise it, things can turn out really badly for not just the child, but you as well, the parent as well. Mm -hmm. But we're going to go into that later. Do you want to share yes. some news with us first of all? Yes, um, since we're talking about having children, I'm going to start with this news. If you have had this, I'm sure you had, um, situation where you call the bank or your mobile phone provider and they they need to speak to the account holder so they have security questions yeah, to make yeah. sure they're speaking to the right person so this couple they've uh, opened an account for their I think 16 month old baby to start saving up for him when he grows older and when they were when they were home they noticed there was something wrong with the details so they called the bank um, they passed through oh, all the security questions yeah. <laughs> and then the operator said, oh, so I, am I speaking to Harry? And the mom said, no, he's a baby. Well, I can only speak to the account holder. <laughs> he hasn't said a word yet. Well, I'm afraid I can only speak to the account holder. <laughs> and they didn't go any further. Then later on, they investigated, they made a complaint and all that. Do you know, this is the type of like call centers, you know, when they do everything by the book and it's really sh like they follow the script really strictly they and they don't like deviate at all. But that's just sorry. That's so silly. <laughs> and then they should when just put they... the baby on and just like goo goo gaga, -ga, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> then they only later on, they were told that they should have been told this before. That for baby for children's accounts, they can only deal with, those, with any kind of queries over the counter. Oh. So they actually have to go in branch oh, okay. to, to amend any or any mistakes, correct any errors. Yeah, okay. Well, that's some knowledge for our viewers there. Thank you for that. But <laughs> they just found that it was annoying. The parents were very upset because they kept saying, look, he's 16 months old. He hasn't said a word and he's a baby. And the operator kept insisting that I can only speak to Mr. Harry. <laughs> and he's a baby, but I can only that speak must to have the account so I think I would have put the phone down. <laughs> it must have been infuriating. Well, so... If you have recently opened an account for your child, don't call the don't call the bank over the phone. Just go over to the one of the branches and sort it out okay. there and then. <laughs> now, when I saw this story, I thought, oh, I have to take this to the show because I just thought it was funny. A husband, a couple in America. Okay, I don't know. It's funny how these things only have happen places <laughs> like America. Texas. The husband in Texas. He was so fed up 
he said he was fed up with, uh, with his day-to-day -day married life and he wanted to go party with his friends and he knew his wife wouldn't just say, okay, you can go. So he faked his own kidnapping at gunpoint. Oh he agreed with his mates to break into the house, uh, kidnap him at gunpoint and take him away. So they did that. They broke into the house, the, hu the husband and wife were home, the friends broke into the house with masks and hoods, um, at, with guns. They kidnapped him, took him away. The wife was desperate, calling the police. The police came. He came back two days later, <laughs> okay? Two days later, he came home and they said, oh, the, the kidnappers agreed to let me, to let me free. So I, I, I was able to change their mind, so I'm back now. But the police weren't fooled. And he, later on, he had to admit that it was all fake. First of all, that, that must have been planned on a drunken night because I don't think anyone that, that's sober would come mm. up with a plan like that because they, don't, they weren't thinking ahead, were they? But then I'm thinking, why would you do that? Being that said, desperate to go out with your friends, maybe you need to question your relationship. He said that he was actually afraid of his wife. Afraid? Oh, dear. Well, I don't so know about <laughs> <laughs> One thing the policeman said is that... Um, they had to arrest him because of uh, a false, what is it called? Um, false report. They mm -hmm. filed a false report that he was kidnapped and then yeah. he agreed to it. He said, yes, I was, and they did this and that. So he was jailed for a while. And then the policeman, the policeman said, well, your worst um, punishment is to go home. <laughs> so go oh home God. and good luck. Oh, no. That's really sad when a relationship reaches that, that point. But first of all, I would not be happy if my husband said to me, I'm going to go like, for a couple of days partying with my friends. Because he wanted I, to I, go partying, but it wasn't just for one night or no. just go out for a Why few hours and come back. Why would you stay at the house and stuff? That, that, would, that would obviously put, like, ring alarm bells for me. Like, you know, what's going on? Why does he want to stay at the house? You know, Two we're married, days. we're meant to be together at night kind of thing. Nah, tell me, definitely need to work on their relationship there. Do you remember we once spoke about something like that as well that happened on a, on a birthday party yeah. where they kidnapped the woman yeah. in, in Portugal? So, <laughs> just ask. Just ask, I'm sure. If yeah. she said no, well, there's always ways you can try and convince. Exactly. The same way the women have their way with the men, men can have their way with women as That's well. True. <laughs> now, we have this teenager. How many languages do you speak, Chris? Two. Two languages. Okay, we have this teenager, he's only, how old is he again? 17 years old, and he speaks 23 oh, different languages. Oh what, fluently? Yes. Oh my goodness. Well, since he was younger, he was posting videos of, of himself speaking different languages. So he started having a lot of attention, everyone said, oh, you are great, and how can you manage that, how did you learn that? So he became so enthusiastic about it, they started learning all these kind of languages. Even African dialects, you know, he knows. That's amazing. I don't know how people can do that. Swahili, a... German, French, Turkish. I think that's, oh, that must be a gift. I don't, I, don't, I don't see how anyone... And he's only 17 and he's learned everything through books and apps on his iPhone. So that's determination, but I, do, I get mixed up with two languages, to be honest, sometimes. Well, actually, I speak... I understand a little bit of another language, so that's kind of two and a half, I, I guess. But I get confused sometimes. I'm talking in one and I forget a word in one language and I'll switch mm -hmm. to the other one and I'll say... In, so it's really... Just, that's just with two and a half <laughs> languages. It's Imagine like... And when you're speaking a, a language, like I'm a foreigner living in England, I speak English every day. But back in the days when I was studying in school, I actually was more fluent in French. I was better at French. How many do you speak? Three. French, Portuguese and English. In English. Mm. I was better at French than English. But now if you ask me, can you speak French? Mm. Although I studied for a few years, yeah, no. but it's all like in the back of my mind, oh. like but inside we'll a drawer somewhere. France again, wouldn't it? If I was to move to France, yeah. I'll probably forget English and... Don't leave me! Then I would start... We'll need you on the show! <laughs> ...picking up my French again. Yeah, probably. That's amazing, gosh, good but on him. But how he handles 23 languages, I have no yeah, idea. Yeah. This week, today actually, I think it happened, or is it? No, it was sometime this week. Um, it's kind of a sad news, but... I don't like sad news on this programme. There was um, <laughs> She just completely ignores me and just carries on anyway. <laughs> a passenger on had to yeah. land a plane on his own. 
because the pilot fell sick. He was ill mm -hmm. uh, and he called the emergency lane, line and said, look, I can't uh, fly this anymore because I'm really sick, I'm really sick, seriously ill. So they had to pass on the phone to the passenger. There was only two people on the phone, on the plane, I think it was a small mm. aircraft. Um, and they had to talk the passenger th over the phone, talk him through all the do's and don'ts and teach him how to land a plane, which he did oh my gosh. safe and sound. And the sad news is that the pilot actually died that night. Oh no, okay. All right, okay, we've run out of time, but you're going to stay with us, aren't you? Yes, Because since am. you're a mummy... Talk about children. Yeah, since you're a mummy, so you're going to be telling us more about sort of your experiences okay. and, you know, if you agree or disagree with the points that we're going to have. And okay. also we're going to be joined by our child expert, Sharon Norton. So do join us after this. Okay, welcome back. Now, before I speak to my next guest, let's take a look at this video of what children really need. What do children really need? Some parents or children might think they know, but do they really? Is it the new iPad or iPhone that the kids want? Or is it love and security? Let's talk to some people who might be able to help us find out. What do children really need? I think children want a lot of the time what other children want. They're influenced a lot at school. Mm. But actually when they're at home normally they want attention um, from their parents or whoever's caring for them. They think they want everything else that every child has, but at the end of the day, which I know from experience, even when you get them those things, they soon lose interest. Playing with my mum, because I wouldn't want to fill my bedroom with all my toys, and because I don't actually need everything. They need to feel loved, they need to feel um, that they can talk to their elders through any problems they're going through. So although they do need some of their things that everyone else has, there are certain things that only certain people around them can give them. Well, maybe they love some of the things. If they at least in a week spend some time with their parents. I think children need balance. I think it's good that they do get some of the things that they want so that they don't feel left out, so that they don't feel that they're deprived maybe from other children and also for them to experience different things. We play dominoes, we play a game with my dolls. Sometimes it's good for them to actually want and to wait and to even have to earn what they want. Why we shouldn't spoil children? When you spoil children, as they grow up, they're going to expect the same treatment from whatever they do and from other people. So whether it be in their job, whether it be in a relationship. Sometimes they want things and then they're like, Oh no, another DS has come out, I want this one. You do want to be your child's best friend, but there also has to be those boundaries in the sense that there are limits and as a parent you still have that authority. I like having a mum, but sometimes when I get angry, I think that I want another mum. Normally you can give them love, but I also think you need to know when to give love. For example, if you're telling your child off, I don't think that's the time to be hugging and kissing and speaking sweet to them and I have seen that in the past with parents that do that. What do kids really hope for their future? I would like to work as a doctor to help kids. Mm -hmm. I would like to have children. I would want Blackberry and do well in my studies. I want to be a good influence but I want her to, to make the right decisions. I want her to be happy. I want her to really fulfill her dreams that she has. I love my daughter this much. <laughs> uh, that much? Can't do any So cute. And now I'm joined by parenting expert Sharon Lawton. Hello, so lovely to have you back Thank here. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to come back and see Aww. you again. So thanks for inviting Brilliant. me back. Brilliant. So we're going to go for some, obviously that looks lovely what we just saw there and like everything sounds great, you know, having children, but 
people do mm -hmm. sometimes have them for the wrong reasons, mm -hmm. and that can bring about very bad circumstances in the end, can it? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And you know, if you're in a committed relationship, the first thing to do actually is to sit down and discuss with your partner you know, the, the reasons why you're actually mm. going forward to do the most important job that you'll ever do in the yeah. world, which is, you know, bringing up... It is the most important thing, It is, absolutely, it? Yeah. bar none, bar yeah. none. Um, and they're a gift, you know, and so, you know, if, if, if you're able to, to be in a committed relationship and bring up a child together, um, before doing that, it's important to sit down and have a, a discussion together about it. Because, really, we meet somebody and we fall in love, and yeah. then we decide to have for whatever reason, um, a child, um, we may not necessarily put as much thought into it as perhaps planning sure. Christmas or planning yeah. a, a holiday, you know. <laughs> so there's a lot of things to consider, you know. A, you know, is this the right time? Mm -hmm. Are you both committed to having the child or is it really just one person that's driving, mm -hmm. you know, that that's And maybe that person that's driving it is, is driving it for the wrong reason. So let's just go through absolutely. a few of the reasons yeah, I'd like absolutely. to get your, mm. your, both your opinions on this. So first of all, some people, this is a classic one, some people decide they want children because they're going through a rocky time in their relationship and they want, they think that by having a child it's going to bring them closer together, it's going to maybe bond them together more and that's just not right, is it? No, what do you think? No, absolutely. And it takes takes two to make a child, yeah. but you know, one to stop. Um, and if if you haven't got two people committed to bringing up that that child, mm. um, and uh, maybe one person in the relationship feels sort of forced to do to go into that situation, really not wholeheartedly, you know, that can cause resentment and more stress on the relationship. Mm. Um, so yeah, really important that both people are completely committed and yeah. it is for the right reasons. Yeah. Patricia, you, you would sort of, I was watching you on another show, <laughs> she was presenting another show, this one, um, talking about the difficulties that you had in the first sort of, uh, few, first few years or first months? First few, first few months. First few months of when you had Isabella. So I can imagine that kind of strain on you say if you were already going through like hard times in your relationship, that must have made, that would have made the relationship worse, not, not better, wouldn't it? Exactly, because if you're already having trouble in your relationship, bringing a child is on, only going to make matters worse. Because the child will need your full attention. Yeah. So it means your partner needs to be very patient and very understanding to, to cope with that as well. That you're mm. not going to be always going to be there for him. You're not going to always have dinner ready at the table when he comes home because maybe you, you are feeding, you are changing nappies. Sometimes you're going to be in a bad mood because you haven't slept all night because you're mm. up feeding. And if your partner, that's, that's like Sharon said, it takes, you need two people to bring up a child. Because mm. when the mother can't cope, then the father mm. is there. Mm. They both work together yeah, to bring up the child together. Okay, so that's definitely, guys at home, that's definitely a bad, bad reason to have a child. It's not fair on the child as well, is it? So, okay, <clears throat> another bad reason that people um, decide to have a child is because maybe the mum's nagging or, the, you know, the family's nagging and, like, because, you know, you've been, maybe you've been together for a little while, they say, they automatically assume that, you know, oh, now it's time, especially some certain cultures as well, that having children is a massive thing, and if you don't have children, there's something wrong with you. So that's never a reason to have a child because someone is knacking you, is it? No, absolutely, and I, and I really think it's a personal choice, and we mm. can get sort of swept along in, you know, family traditions and cultures, and, and yeah. again, end up doing it for the wrong reason. But I think, you know, it is a very personal decision. Um, and it is about being true to yourself. And I think sometimes, and you know, we're all women sitting here together this evening, mm. um, sometimes some women reflect and think actually there's something wrong with them for not wanting yeah. to have a child. But that's not necessarily the case. We're all different. We're mm -hmm. all put on the earth for different reasons. Yeah. Um, so not to feel under pressure if that's not the right thing to do, because it's yeah. a huge commitment. That's right. Okay, I think we've got one time for one more before we go to the break. Classic another one. And I think this one, I can understand how many will fall into this kind of trap, if I can say, if that's for want of a better word. It's about time. So the biological clock is ticking and, you know, some ladies get worried that if I reach a certain age, then it's not going to be possible for me to have a child. So I need to have one now, even if I'm not in a committed relationship, even, you know, if I don't love maybe this person that I'm with, I think I should have one anyway, because maybe later I won't have the chance to do that. What do you think about that, Patricia? I kind of understand where they come from. Yeah. Uh, because then if 
they're not in a stable relationship and they get into one later on and then they want to have children, that's it. The clock yeah. was ticking and time is over for them. But I think there's always other things they should consider. Mm -hmm. There's other things you could do. And like adoption, Unless for you example, are ready to bring a child on your own. Mm. Because then it's, it's harder as well for you to get into an, a relationship if you already have a child mm -hmm. that is not your partner's. Yeah, so it makes, right. it makes it worse as well, I think, in my opinion. Yeah. And that, you know, you're sort of putting yourself at risk as well, like you're saying, because if you're with, you're with someone just to, to have a child with them, you're bringing that child into a relationship, that, into a family that's not stable, and mm. that's going to cause loads of problems, mm. isn't it? Yeah, and I think, you know, we, we need to ensure that the child is wanted, not needed, oh. you know, needed to fulfil some sort of dream yeah. or hope yeah. or, or, or aspiration that perhaps, you know, the parent didn't fulfil, or potential parent didn't fulfil themselves, mm. or, or for it to be given a job that actually, you know, it's not able to fulfil, yeah. to, to save a relationship or to keep somebody with you, you know, and they're all the mm, wrong definitely reasons. Definitely wrong reasons. Okay, so we're going to be covering some more points after this break. If you'd like to get involved in the conversation as well, and maybe give your opinion about wrong reasons to have a child, do give us a call on 020 7686 You can also tweet Chrissy B Show and also post your comments on Facebook page. The Chrissy B Show. So do join us after this. Welcome back to tonight's show and we're discussing very bad reasons to have a child because when people bring children into the world they have to make sure they're doing it for the right reasons or else there can be really bad consequences. But before we carry on with the discussion, let's take a look at this video. I opened in September of last year, so I've been open now for about 15 weeks. I think I'm in my 15th week now. Okay, and um, how many children do you have? Because I know you've got one over there, which is Robin. My youngest with me today, she comes in the shop on Monday afternoons, um, but I also have three, well I have three in total, so two, two, two older ones. So that's, um, that's three children, so that must be quite, was it quite hard to set up the business? It was quite tricky, um, I, I, um, I'm being a bit of a neglectful mum at the moment I guess, because you know, I'm having to throw myself into work. Um, and I'm working all hours of the day, um, so the kids just have to literally get on, um, you know, get on themselves and um, give me a bit of space sometimes when I'm working at home. So Jackie, one thing that you have in common with um, Diana is that you're actually sisters yeah. and that you both are parents and you both sort of have your own jobs or own business. How do you find actually being a mum? Um, it, it's quite tough, um, especially when they're younger, because mine's five. Mm. So it can be quite difficult, especially because I'm on my own, so to, to do everything. Um, but then at the same time, it's rewarding as well. You get, you know, you get, you know, you teach your child and you, you, everything they know, they learn from you. So in that way, it's nice. And have you had quite a lot of support or is, as you said, you, has it been mostly the whole time on your own doing, looking after Abby and juggling this job that you're doing? Um, I mean, I have support of like my family and friends, um, you know, so. I'm quite lucky in that sense. Uh, um, I've pretty much managed on my own. Um, I do, well, well, their grandparents help out a little bit, um, um, but I, I'm pretty much juggling it all and just trying to fit it in, in inside school hours. So after having Abby, what gave you um, the inspiration to sort of go to college and get back into work and having a career? Well, I think mainly um, I quite enjoy to learn new things. I've always had a creative passion, so I just like, you know, really just wanted to do it. Just something I really like, just felt I wanted to do. So, you know, you started off doing the beauty and the massaging, and now you want to do like sort of sport therapy. Um, that's great. You've almost like progressed, and you're sort of developing a career and going on to different like tangents. Where do you, where would you like to see yourself with with your work and stuff in the in the near future? 
Um, well, I'd like to think that possibly, because um, I'm doing the sports massage, that I basically, well, I'll be on the level where I can run alongside a th physio. So what would you say to any um, mums out there who just had children now, or even they've got older children, um, that maybe once had goals and dreams, but they sort of lost all that hope after having children? What would you say to maybe give them a bit of belief in themselves or hope they could do it? Well, I think really the most important thing is to follow your dream. Um, if you And if you have a gut feel about something, you should really just go for it. Sometimes you have to just jump in. Um, well, I think if you know if they did have dreams and they sort of lost it or they put it aside because of their children, then they should you know they should try and go for it. You know, again, or even if it's like impossible if their children are too young when they get older, like re you know readdress that dream that you wanted because if you really want it, you can go and get anything. Okay, so now let's go uh, into some more wrong reasons to have children. Now, I can speak from an experience that I had because when I was going through my issues with depression and everything, I actually really wanted a baby because I thought if I have a, if I have a baby, um, maybe I won't feel like this. Maybe like all my attention is going to go on this child and like I'm, I'm going to be so focused on that child that all this is going to go away. And you know, thank and I even considered marrying someone that I didn't even love, that was twice my age, that just happened to say that he really loved me, just met me, and really loved, was my my best friend at the time's brother. And I considered marrying him because I thought it's going to take my my attention away from what's going on inside. And that's a terrible reason to do anything actually, to either to get married to someone or to to have a child because that's not going to fix uh, having a child or getting married to that person is not going to fix the issues that you're going that's going on inside and i'm so thankful that i i didn't go down that road or have a child that back then or you know get married to that person because you know my life completely turned around after that when i when i got the help so you have to be really careful that you're not considering having a baby because there's something missing in you it's not the child that's missing because you're going to find you have the child and you'll still be feeling down because you haven't addressed the real issue that's going on. So it's very, very important that you don't fall into that trap. I don't know if you've got anything no, to add absolutely. to that. Absolutely. No. I mean, you know, life is all about making choices, isn't it? And, mm -hmm. you know, the choice to have a child is, is not one to be taken lightly and certainly not one to fill a, a gap or yeah. a hole that we feel that we, we have. Mm -hmm. um, and our emotional health is really important because if we can't if we haven't got a good emotional health ourselves and we can't nurture and look after yeah. ourselves, how mm. can we nurture and look after this little bundle of, of yeah. fun that we've been given? <laughs> and also it's very stressful, isn't it? We were talking about that before and also because in the break. You will say that you, you're going through depression mm -hmm. and you wanted to have a child, but then how many mothers have babies today and then they go, for, they go, they suffer postnatal depression mm. yeah. and they don't yeah. want their babies anymore and they feel like they've done the wrong thing. So it's not going to cure depression. Right. And that's also obviously leads to a lot of children being in care as well because a parent that's depressed, for example, can't cope. They can't even cope with normal life sometimes, yeah. never yeah. mind the child as well. So then they, they end up, the child's children get taken away yeah. from them. Real consequences. Yeah. So any behaviour has an ultimate consequence. Yeah. It's easy to make a baby. Yeah. <laughs> not so easy to look after them, so we have to think about that. Definitely. And it's for life. Yeah. It's it not just for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Not right, just for 18 years. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, let's go to another one as well. Now, this one you might not have crossed. You know, this one might have not have crossed your mind. But sometimes people want to have want to have children because they want attention. Now, if you come from a family, for example, where a sibling got loads of attention and like you always felt like I'm second best, and then that sibling, for example, has children and now everyone's fussing over them. You think, oh, I'm going to have a child because I want I want that kind of attention as well. It's, Crazy as it sounds, but there are people, and this is all based on research, by the way, there are people that do have children because they want attention from maybe their mum that didn't give them much attention. They're going to think, oh, now maybe mum's going to be more attentive to me and she's going to want to be with her grandchild. But the chances are that, that maybe that dynamic is not going to change just because you've had children. Maybe you're going to end up feeling still left out because the other, your sister's child, for example, will be getting more attention. So it's something quite dangerous. Mm. It goes back to the wants and needs again, doesn't it? Yeah. The child's got to be wanted, not needed for the wrong reason. That's right. What do you think, Pat? I think we've got a tweet through. I'm just trying to find where it was. Carry on talking, ladies. <laughs> They're going to say, talk about what? <laughs> <laughs> you know when tweets come up on your iPad so fast and they kind of come up and then you can't sort of get to them afterwards? Okay, never mind. I can't and also find the it. stress thing, isn't it? You know... If you're, if you're feeling quite stressed anyway, 
Yeah. Um, and the situation, uh, the relationship with your extended family is quite stressed. Mm. You know, it's going to just... It's um, just going to escalate, that, isn't, isn't it? it? Definitely. Yeah. Okay, then. Um, and also, let's go to another point here. Um, so you will feel like you've accomplished something. Now, if you come from a, a background where... Uh, maybe you feel like you failed at things. Maybe you didn't finish your education for whatever reason, or you've had failed relationships, or did you just feel like you haven't accomplished what you maybe should have done by now. Then you think, okay, well, I can't really go wrong with having a child, so at least that's something good that I've done with my life because children are wonderful. So I feel, I'm going to feel great if I have a child. At, at last, I've done something right. Mm, how dangerous <laughs> is that? Self-esteem is really big on that one, isn't it? That sort of mm. comes through to me, you know, screaming loud and clear. And I'll go back to the point I said before, the most important job we would ever do is to bring up a child. Mm. Um, and from my experience, and you know, Chrissy, that I work with families and with, yeah. with, with children and with parents, um, it's very undervalued. And so even if you decide to do it for that reason. Mm. Sometimes society can undervalue that really important job. Yeah. And so you can see yourself perhaps um, not having accomplished what you think you've accomplished, yeah. even though it is the most important job. Because if you don't see that yourself, yeah. then you know, that's not going to change anything. I mean, it is, I, mean I think being a mum, I'm not a mum myself, and for reasons I'm, I might talk about after the break, but um, it sometimes people don't realise how, it, I think it is an accomplishment in a sense to be a mum is something, you know, hearing from friends and how what my mum went through with us as well, with my sister. It is a huge accomplishment to have a child and to be a good parent. But like you said, sometimes people don't even value that or give no, you any respect no. for it or anything, do no. they? And equally, yeah. it's okay not to want children. Yeah. You know, it doesn't make us a bad person either way. Yeah. I think, you know, but I think the thing that sort of is missing in all of that is often um, that there are lots of parenting groups and parenting programs and parenting classes out there to support parents if they're struggling mm -hmm. or if they just want to find out a little bit more. I work alongside an amazing um, company called Family Links mm -hmm. and um, they, um, they run a, an amazing program, um, both, both antenatally and for, for parents of slightly older children. And it's all about sort of nurturing and nurturing yourself and nurturing, mm. you know, the child. And the antenatal program, which is amazing, you know, just sort of gets the parents to sort of look at the whole issue of planning a child, the changes that, you know, you're going to have to make when it comes to mm -hmm. having that child. It's so Think great to have that, 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 that support nowadays, isn't it? Oh, Cause, yeah, cause yeah, parents absolutely. parents need that because, it's, you know, it's a great thing to have children, but you do need that support as well. We're going to go to a quick break mm. and then we'll be back to talk about the last few points that we've got here. So do join us after this. What I enjoy about teaching kids is um, they're very enthusiastic, they're very open-minded, they're, they're willing to try new things, um, and they're like sponges at this age, and they really absorb a lot of information. What's the difference, do you think, between a batter and a dough? A batter is runny and a dough is solid. Excellent, good girl. Okay, so the consistency, okay, how wet it is will be very different. The kids' cookery school was started because my eldest son went off to primary school and I learnt that he wasn't going to learn to cook, and I didn't want that. And what do you promote at this school? Oh, we promote healthy eating, particularly uh, foods low in fat, sugar and salt. Everything is fresh, everything's made from scratch. And it, it used to be home economics, but it doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> Cooking is a life skill. Um, every child, um, even as young as three years old, should learn about cooking, about the skill, why it matters, we need to eat fresh food, we need to keep fit for life, and the only way to keep fit for life is to learn to cook. I, th I think the, the hygiene is, is incredibly important. It's, it's always a, uh, the grounding and what where we start the sessions. Um, from that, 
it's, it's about having fun, it's about enjoying it, not eating fruits and vegetables just because you're told to, but because they're tasty and they're, and they're delicious. Why do you enjoy coming to the kids' cookery school? Because I, because I, because I love cooking. What is your favourite dish? Pizza. The pumpkin. Because it's, because it smells so good. <laughs> um, the fingers. Is it because you like decorating it? And do you help your mum to cook at home as well? Yes. Why do you think cooking is important? Because, um, if you didn't know how to cook, you can, you can't cook things to eat. So if they were raw, you, you might not be able to cook them. What is it about the kids' cookery school that they enjoy? Oh, everything. They like just learning about healthy eating. And talk to me about it in the supermarket. We're trying to get them off the junk food, off fast food, off snacks, all of the foods which are too readily available. It's a good, good age to try and get kids involved in cooking because um, as you can see that they've used lots of lovely colourful uh, fruits and vegetables which is obviously clearly better for them uh, in their diet and they're more likely to eat it if they've had a hand in cooking as well. So we know that children are really fast learners and it's interesting that the ladies they were saying that even from three years old they can start learning how to Mm. Cook already. Incredible, isn't it? Yeah. And I think one of the most amazing things, uh, and probably something that you know most of us aren't aware of, is when our baby is born, their brain is there, but it's still developing. And in that first year of life, it doubles in size and it's growing all of the time. And of course, the most influential person mm. to develop a child's brain is the is the parent. And so it's really important that we have really good, um, sound, emotional. Um, environment for that child yeah. to grow up in and they know that they're loved and wanted um, for the right reasons and that will help their brain develop and, and they will become healthy children and that mm. will turn them into healthy adults that can make good relationships and then go on to form their own relationships mm. and possibly have their own you see children. how important it is to make sure you, you are having kids Absolutely for the right reasons. Absolutely crucial. If you're, if you're talking about any of, if you have them for any of these reasons that we mentioned now it's like that child could be like damaged if I can say if that's yeah. For the rest of their life, because yeah. they haven't they haven't had that proper um, education at home yeah. and the nurturing at home, and that a lot of them end up in lots yeah. of problems in the future. And I would say, you know, if anybody listening tonight is has the smallest doubt, mm. don't do it. You need to be a hundred percent, or talk to someone. You know, talk to your friend, or there's loads of professionals and people out there as well. You yeah. know, that you can talk to. Really it's important, true. don't hold it in and suppress it and, and then just do yeah. it to make somebody happy. It's true because, uh, like I was saying before the break, I decided not to have children. I always wanted kids. I was, uh, it was a dream of mine to have, to have children, but then because of what my husband does as a minister, sometimes we have to kind of move house really quick to go to a different area. And we, when we sat down to speak about it, I, I, didn't, I didn't feel comfortable to have children in that, those kind of circumstances. But pl and when I look back now, at the time I cried when we made that decision, I did cry, but then I thought it's for the best. I want to dedicate myself to something that I'm doing to, to help other people. But as well, when I look back now, I think I would have been too much of a warrior. Because of the, as in worry, not warrior, like a ooh, he man or anything. <laughs> but, because I have a cat and if I can't find her in the house, I panic and I'm looking for her everywhere. And I'm thinking, my God, if I had a child, what would I be like? It's and like sometimes I think, would I have really been a good mum anyway? I think I would have been. My husband, I think, would have been a, made a great dad. But it's like, I think I would worry too much and be too stressed out all the time. And I, to be honest, I look at mums and I admire them because they go through so much, so much worry and when the child is sick and everything. So I think I, I'm happy with the decision that I made. Mm. But, you know, and, and I think people should... Like you said, if there is a doubt, don't do it just because of some of the reasons that we're speaking about. Obviously, it's lovely to have kids. If, you, if you're all for it, go for it, of course, and be the best parent that you can be. But if you don't really want to be a parent, you, don't, you can't see the reasons why, you know, maybe you're so much into your career, for example, or, or you have other plans, it's okay not mm. to have them. Don't mm. feel like you should have them just because other people, it's like, the in, okay, you meet someone, you fall in love, you have a baby. It doesn't, you don't have to. It's no. about, it has to be a decision that both of you absolutely, make. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And it's about you writing your own story, your own yeah. life story, isn't it? And being creators of that. And you mm. and your husband were creators of your own life story. Yeah. You sat down and you discussed it. Um, and, and that's a really positive, healthy way mm -hmm. for two people to decide or not to decide, to sit down together.
yeah, and make and the decision together. It. And it is really stressful, isn't it? It's is it? really stressful. I don't know how you it's guys do it, honestly. It's a big responsibility. The life depends on you. Once, mm. once the baby's born, he's out there and his life depends on you. He depends on you to be fed. He depends on you to put him to sleep, to clothe yeah. him, to, to love him. So mm. don't just do it just like you're going to buy something from the shop and mm. come home with a baby. <laughs> it's, you it's can't a, give them back, can you? No. It's a <laughs> big responsibility. <laughs> and if you're not yeah. ready for it, you need, you need to be ready to have a child. Yeah. And important to, to have those good support mechanisms in place, isn't it? Because it is very stressful. Mm. Um, and, and your life does change beyond all recognition, doesn't it? You might think you prepare yourself. Mm. Some people aren't ready for that, are they? No, absolutely. They're and then when, when everything changes, it's like they end up blaming the child. Oh, mm. it's because of you that I had to stop. Yeah. my career is because of you and they might not say it directly but there's that resentment that's there because yeah. they feel like they're not accomplishing what they wanted to because and because the child will feel child. that yeah. because the child becomes in tune with, with with the with the mother with the with the father um, and when they're really little you know it's really important to make sure you've got good ways of regulating your stress mm -hmm. because if you can find that and you can start to sort of keep yourself relaxed when you start to relax your yeah. heart rate drops yeah. the baby's heart rate drops yeah. You know, your, your blood pressure drops, the baby's blood pressure drops, your muscles mm. relax, the babies do, because you're so in tune. Yeah. You know, so it is important because one is affecting the other. Really? Gosh. Oh, it's so deep. Okay, we've got a few more uh, points here. Um, let me just, I don't think we're going to have time for all of them, so I'm going to pick out ones that maybe. I think this one may be a bit of an obvious one as well. You want to carry on the family name. That's the reason why, you know, and again, I think that links into the family thing, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Like we said at the beginning, that. Mm. Because I used to think about, oh, you know, if we don't have kids, then there's not going to be, there's not going to be like a, a, a boo dram to carry on the, the family name kind of thing. But you can write a book and carry on your name if you, if you really want. And who, who's really going to remember you anyway? Just what I mean, once we go, we go and it's like, okay, you write a book or whatever. Everyone else goes as Everyone well. Everyone goes so. as well. So what's the point of having kids just to, just to carry on a family name? I remember my, my father used to always say, um, a garden with a, a couple without a baby, without a child, is like a garden without flowers. And every time I would receive calls from my relatives, so, oh, because I was from my cousins, I was the first one to get married. And I got married very young. So every time they would call, they so when are you going to have a baby? When are you going to have a baby? And mm. I, I kind of had already my mind set that I, I wasn't going to have children. Uh, but then eventually I got, it wasn't planned, I, I got pregnant and I had to prepare myself for mm. it. I wasn't, I wasn't prepared, I wasn't planning any, any of it, but she came, so... And she's beautiful. Then I had to deal with it. Yeah, she's gorgeous. But I wasn't, then my father was over the moon, yeah, the whole yeah. family was celebrating, <laughs> yes, she's pregnant, they were so happy for me. Uh -huh. But I didn't have the child because my father was telling me that yeah, you yeah. need to have mm. a child, or my cousins kept asking me when you're going to get pregnant mm. and things like that. You can't, you can't base your decisions on other people, definitely. Now, we've got a few minutes left, so tell us now, let's discuss the right reasons to have children, because <laughs> we've spoken about lots of, there's lo lo loads more wrong ones, but let's talk about the right reasons, girls, come on. Give me the Gosh, right reasons. well, <laughs> how long have you got? I think it needs to be a really personal decision, would you agree? It needs to be something that you know, you're both ready for and you've sat yeah. and discussed together. Mm. Um, you know, make sure that you've sat and discussed the right reasons, and you're yeah. bringing that child into a, you know, into a warm relationship, preferably with you know two parents who are able to nurture and look. Because it does after bring, I, I think it does bring, it can bring a couple closer if the relationships are really good. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, and to discuss all of those things, you know, beforehand, you know, so you know, talk about how you might want to bring up that child because you might have very different opinions on on discipline and how you know what time they're going to mm -hmm. go to bed and you know different religious beliefs maybe mm -hmm. if that's a factor you know to talk all about that first but they are wonderful and they give so much yeah. unconditionally there's nothing conditional where, where a child is concerned they love you unconditionally and they love you warts and all you know there isn't any you know, they just see you for you know for yeah. who you are well the best thing about being a mum then for both of you what's the best thing Patricia I know there must be loads of things but what's the best thing for you I don't know. I think there's a lot of reasons why I love being your mom. Like I said t today, that my mm -hmm. daughter said I'm her best friend. Yeah. She kisses me all the time. If I say, okay, bye-bye, she comes to kiss me like three or four times before oh. I leave the house. I'm about to close the door and she comes again, mommy, 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 and she hugs me and kisses me. Okay, bye. <laughs> then, mommy, mommy. 
hugs oh, me and kisses so me cute. again. It's just feeling loved, but also she feels love. She loves me because I love her back. Yeah. I mean, maybe I love her first. She loves me back, isn't it? Mm. And I think, I think a couple, when you decide to have a child, it's in my opinion, that's when you start having a family. Mm. Because when it's just a husband and wife, it's one thing, but when you bring a child together, it's when your family starts yeah, to, to start. Your family starts there, yeah. and then all the decisions of bringing them, bringing the child together. We were talking about uh, parents sometimes blame their children because they had to quit their careers, they had to mm. quit their jobs, things like that. And the power of the words to be careful what you say to your child yeah. as well. Make sure she feels loved, secure, mm. safe. That she's free to come and speak to you about anything that happens, mm -hmm. that you make time for them. Definitely. Oh, there's so much we can talk about, there's loads more, but we've run out of time, ladies. I words cannot great. express. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know, but I can imagine. <laughs> well, I have a cat and I love my cat very, very much, so. But that, so you give your gifts here. in other ways. I do, I do, yeah. <laughs> I do love holding babies up. But anyway, we have time to go. Thank you so much, ladies, You're for everything welcome. that you spoke about today. I'm sure it's been really helpful for our viewers, and we will see you again next time on the show. And if you want more information, you can visit the website, chrissybshow.tv. It's been great, and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye for now. And, I mean, I've just seen around your building, there are certain snacks that you promote and certain snacks that you discourage, you know, such as chocolate, such as, such, oh, I'm going to forget about that. No, 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 And why do you think cooking is important? Or else you die if you don't if you don't eat. And if people do want to find out more information about the Kids Cookery School, where can they go to? Um, it's very simple. It's the Kids Cookery School at oh that's the, the <laughs> sorry.